All right, 15.5, we're literally halfway through this chapter. See how easy peasy it is. We are definitely, uh, this is a big guy, okay? Not hard, but it's a big guy. We have three learning objectives that go with calculating KC, okay? So either KC or KP. So calculate KC or KP based on the experimental, okay, aka data, aka data. So just like when we did chapter four to turn, to uh, determine the orders, we needed that data. So big time, big time, we need some values, okay, of the concentrations or pressures at equilibrium. So equilibrium constants can be determined from that experimental measurements of the concentrations of pre uh, pressures of the reactants or products of equilibrium. Nothing hard. When we do our KC or KP, just products over the reactants, okay? But there is a but to this, okay? Identify the concentrations or partial pressures. Remember, partial pressure just means a pressure of one gas, okay, whatever that gas is, of chemical species at equilibrium based on initial conditions and the equilibrium constant, okay? So this is going to be very, very important with initial, okay? The concentrations of pressures of species uh, at equilibrium can be predicted given the balance equation, the initial concentrations, and K. So when you solve for this, it's a technique called ICE, ICE charts, okay? I've even seen some teachers and professor, uh, professors call them RICE charts, okay? It doesn't matter to me which one. I'm used to this one, and we even have a cool song to go with it to help you with it. But to do these, you need a balance equation, you need initial concentrations, and you need K, okay? But here's the but. I'm coming back to this one. With this KC, Okay, you can only plug values in at equilibrium. Okay, so the problem is what if we have initial values, not equilibrium values? So in that case, you have to do an ice chart. Okay, so with an ice chart, if you are given initial values instead of equilibrium and this is the difference between a question with a little bit of points versus a question with a lot of points okay so if you forget to do the ice chart for that problem you're missing a lot of points represent a system undergoing a reversible reaction with a particle diagram okay and you know we like to do those drawings Particle representations can be used to describe the relative numbers of reactants and products. So in one of the homeworks you saw when we did those homework questions 2, 3, 4, and 5, you saw that we were using a lot of particle diagram. What does it look like before equilibrium and what does it look like after? And then can you calculate the value of K? Will the K increase? Will it decrease? Is it less than 1, greater than 1? What happens if we mess with the reaction? Okay, so let's do some calculations. So bust out that calculator and here we go. At equilibrium you have the following chemicals with the following concentrations. So calculate Kc. Okay so I said the magic word at equilibrium. So first I have to write my Kc expression. This is a number one first point when you're doing this. So I have my products and it has an order of two over my two reactants and they get multiplied, whoops, sorry, they get multiplied together. And because I have equilibrium, no ice chart needed, okay? And I know you don't know what an ice chart is, but you know what's coming. So because it's at equilibrium, I can simply just plug and chug. So my product, which is 0.714, okay? Now because, ladies and gentlemen, remember, KC has no units. Okay, we do not have to plug units into this equation. And I know you just got happy, okay, but calm down. Two on top. And then for H2, we have 0 0.100. And then that's going to get multiplied by 0 0.100 also. You could have on here, you could have also said 0 0.100 and then put a square instead. That's fine because it's the same value. So when you plug this in, let's make we, sure we plug it in together. 0.714, hit your square button which should be right there near your log button. And you get a very small number, 0 0.509. I don't need to write that down. But then on the bottom, you get 0 0.100. And if you square that, 
you also get a very small number. So you need to take that number on top, divide it by on the bottom. So that 0 0.509, and then divide by 0 0.01, and you get, looks like three sig figs, you get 50, uh, it looks like 50.97, so it's sig figs, 51.0, okay? So you could be asked this question, uh, since, KC is definitely greater than one. Uh, which side is the reaction favored? So remember our cool little trick, okay? And then if you make, looks like little arrows on that KC, and because our KC is pointing to an equation on the, the product side, so our products are definitely favored. So we are producing more products than reactants. And then the equilibrium, lies to the right okay so there you go easy peasy nothing hard with this let's try another one a little bit more wordy okay a mixture of hydrogen nitrogen and a reaction vessel is allowed to reach equilibrium okay at 472 because remember k depends on that temperature the equilibrium so there's that magic word i'm looking for not initial of uh, the gases were found to be that pressure for each one of those three. From the data, write a balance equation and calculate Kp. Uh, I'll write the Kp expression and then calculate for Kp. Okay, so number one, we need a balance equation. A mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen are allowed to reach equilibrium. So hydrogen, diatomic gas, because you know Rodriguez is not that cool, nice person where I'm going to give you a balance equation all the time. And H2 and N2 should come together, and I hope you know you will be producing Mr. Ammonia, okay? Mr. Famous process called the Harbor process. Yes, you have to know that guy's name, the Harbor process. And definitely also going to be a gas, okay? Quick balancing, and I will tell you here, ladies and gentlemen, you definitely don't want to be thinking of fractions especially because the coefficients are the orders. So we don't want to be putting to the power of one half and the power of three halves. Okay, we really don't want to be doing that. If you can figure it out with math, great, do it. Uh, two times three, so then right here we get a three. So there's our balance equation, easy one point. And now what's the Kp expression? So Kp is my pressure of ammonia, parentheses two, and make sure no brackets, and then down here, my pressure of H2, and that's cubed. And then my pressure of N2, and then to the first power. Simply plug and chug. And because we're solving for K, even though they gave us ATMs, we are not concerned with those units. So up here, squared. And then for H2, I know some of you are like, man, I can't lose a point now if I don't have to put those units. Rodriguez can't come after me. You know I'm sure I'll come after you for something, okay? But no, I can't come after you for units for this. Uh, so I'm just keeping track. I'm putting everything where it goes. And then 2.46. And then for nitrogen is first order. So there you go. All right. So here we go. 0.166. And we are going to square that. And the calculator, you get about 0 0.027. But I need to take care of that bottom part. So I'm going to take 7.38. Do this part first and then second step and then multiply okay so 7.38 use your little caret upside down v to the third and you get like 400 and something and then times 2.46 so i'm just making a note so you see what i got i get about 988 here and then up here on top i got about what is that point point zero two blah 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 okay i don't write it down just plug it in the calculator so that 0 0.0275, and I'm just going to put three sig figs in the calculator, divide by that 988, and don't round it. Uh, you will get a small number, 2.78 to the negative 5. Very, very small, negative 5. And since Kp uh, is very, very, very less than 1, and remember our little trick, don't do this on the AP test where they see these little arrows, okay? That little trick's just for you. And it looks like my arrows are pointing to the right side. So my reactants are more dominant. My reactants are more favored. I'm producing very little products. 
and reactants are favors, which means equilibrium. And don't abbreviate the word equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium lies to the left because the reactants are on the left side. Okay? Easy peasy, fresh and squeezy, awesome, awesome. What if you actually have to solve for a chemical, not KP? Okay? And if they gave you KP, so I'm going to keep track of what I have. Here's my Harbor process right there. There's my KP. Remember, KP depends on concentration. So, I'm sorry, depends on temperature. So that KP at 500 degrees is 1.45. And look at what we did up here. At 472 Celsius, my KP is this. Okay, so just remember, Ks regardless depend on temperature. If you have an equilibrium of three gases, so I'm keeping track of that word equilibrium, the partial pressure for hydrogen is this, and the partial pressure of nitrogen is this. What's the pressure of ammonia? Well, I got KP, I'm just literally working backwards, okay? And then this problem is right there uh, in the textbook on uh, 642, if you want to also see it there too, okay? KP, always write your expression, and we don't need to rethink what it is because we wrote it up here. And if you want to try this yourself first, ladies and gentlemen, which you know I always strongly suggest, pause the video, try the math yourself, and then see if you get the right answer. PN2, okay? So I know KP, they told me this very small number, 1.45 to the negative 5, and I'm just putting my values in where they go. Now up here, I'm solving for the pressure of ammonia, so I just call this X, but it's X squared, okay? And you don't need the parentheses if you don't want to put it. On the hydrogen on the bottom is 0.928, and I do have to cube that, and then down here for nitrogen, 0.432, okay? So first step down here, take care of the denominator. So I'm going to plug in that 0.928, and I'm going to cube it, and you get about 0.799, okay? And I'm going to take that number and multiply it by 0.432, okay? So what I have right here is I have x squared, and then in the denominator, I'm just going to write 3 sig figs, uh, 0.345, okay? Now basic math, ladies and gentlemen, I need to solve for x, but i got to get this 3, 4, 5 out of the denominator. So I'm going to bring it up and multiply it by that kp. So times 1.45e negative 5, okay? And it's still a small number. You get 5.00 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. Uh, and now I have x squared. Okay. Well, how do you get rid of the square? You take the square root of each side. So you show a p that I'm going to take the square root and then square root of each side. On the right side, what happens? The square root takes care of the square. So then I just have x left over. So the square root of that number and equals 0 .00 uh, with three sig figs, two, two, four. Now, hear me, hear me on this last part. You have to tell AP what you solved for. Who did I solve for? X represents the pressure of NH3. So I tell them that's the pressure of ammonia. However, the units come back. You solve for pressure, so I need to put ATM with that answer. If we were solving for concentration, then you would slap on a molarity. But make sure you tell them who X is. If you wanted to tell them up here next to the equation, X equals NH3, or pressure, sorry, pressure of NH3, that's fine. You just got to tell them somewhere what X means, okay? All right, easy peasy, not too bad. If by chance, ladies and gentlemen, let's just say with a different color, let's say this right here would have been like a 3, okay? So then what you do is not take the square root, you take the cube root, okay? So then you would just put a 3 right here. So then that way you show that the 3s cancel, okay? And I can show you that trick uh, when we do practice problems in class too. Usually for the graphing calculator people, you would be hitting uh, what's called the math button. So graphing calculator people, the button that says math. And then what you would be doing is you'd be hitting option number four, okay? Or you can plug that number in, five, for those of you that don't have a graphing cal calculator, your way of doing it is 0 .00 times 10 to the six, okay? And then you hit your little caret, little button, 
and then you put in um, one third or you could put 0.333 that'd be fine okay you can do it that way too you just have to figure out how your calculator works but for graphing calculator if you hit that math button your option is option number four okay and you could see a fourth root okay and I will show you when we get to one of those examples too okay all right here's the beast okay and I think you're gonna like it really really students really love chapter 15 and, and 14 uh, because they actually really understand it okay and when you understand a topic ladies and gentlemen you know you like it and when it's a topic that you don't really understand it's not a topic that you love okay we all know that since what happens here's the however what happens if we don't know equilibrium okay so what happens if we actually have what's called initial values so if given initial values okay not equilibrium if we know the equilibrium concentration of at least one substance okay we can use stoichiometry to figure out the other ones so if we know at least one then we can find the others with stoichiometry and I know you guys love that stoichiometry so we call these ice charts for initial change equilibrium like I said, some teachers call it rice charts for the R means reaction, AKA your balance equation. Okay. Either one, ladies and gentlemen, but I like ice because we got a cute little song that goes with it. Ice uh, chart rules, what you do, I'm giving you the rules first. And then I have a sample example written step-by-step. Step. So if you have initial and equilibriums in a given species, change, uh, calculate the change in concentration. So change is usually it's the middle step. I like to call it the middle step. Okay. Use the coefficients big time, big time. You have to pay attention to that equation. Use the coefficients of the balance equation to concentrate, uh, to calculate the change of those concentrations. Determine the equilibrium con concentrations of all species and then use those concentrations to calculate your constant. Okay, if we would have had pressures, then you use pressures. So with ice charts, you can use either concentrations or pressures. Okay, no moles. Okay, and no grams. Okay, I promise, I promise, I'm going to put you on blast if I see that moles and grams in my ice charts. Okay, which means use stoichiometry, get it to concentrations. Okay, and if, before I get this question, because I know someone's thinking it out there in the world, if no volume is given you know that big word that makes life simple assume a volume and please pick the number one because moles divided by one is now the same number in molarity okay so there you go say that fancy word and now those moles just became molarity don't even have to show that math okay so here's an example step by step Took me a lot of time typing this out for you, but I wanted you to have one in your notes. So say we have, here's our example, an initial, uh, a closed system, and usually with equilibrium, it's a closed system. And what we mean by closed means that no matter or energy can get in or out. Everything's just staying in that container. And here's the word that's big time important. Initially, not equilibrium. Initially, if I have this concentration of hydrogen and iodine at that temperature, then it's allowed to reach equilibrium, but it wasn't at equilibrium to begin with. So not equilibrium to begin. Now at equilibrium, so now at equilibrium, I know the concentration only for this one chemical. I only know it for the product. Calculate KC. Okay. These are the type of questions, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to know and I don't know. You've seen me solving the problems. You see me not doing know and I don't know. And that's okay. I usually, with the problems, I just start writing on the problems. And on an AP test, you can do that. And that's totally fine without doing a know and I don't know. I have my equation right there. Okay. And like I said, that's what some teachers call the rice part. Okay, I'm not going to do that. We create an ice chart just like this. Okay, 
usually with our ice chart, you don't have to draw all the boxes. You just want to have it set up this way. And when you see me do a sample problem from start to beginning, you'll see what I mean. So we just call this usually ice. Okay, please do not spend the time. Please don't write those words at. That takes like a minute of time. And you know Rodriguez is going to give you like 20,000 examples. And we don't have 20,000 minutes to spare. So ICE, that's it. Here's my initial values. And because they gave me those values right up here. So there's my initial hydrogen. There's my initial iodine. And they didn't say anything about the product. Okay, so remember initially the reaction hasn't happened. I have zero. Okay because this is before the reaction so since I have my reactants and I have my product because I don't have anything before the reaction I just put zero now the change the change is what we're trying to figure out okay now it's like a puzzle but I do know this piece of information they said right there at equilibrium I do know the equilibrium for the product okay so that means between zero and 1.8 that means you gained a concentration of 1.8 to the negative 3. You are doing an ice chart, ladies and gentlemen, so you need to make sure that you're keeping track of your units in your ice chart. Okay, with KC and KP, you don't need to. So you gained. Okay, well, if I know what I gained here, then I know what I should be losing because back in chapter 14, you are decreasing your concentrations as your product is increasing. So that means both of these will be negative okay and I did all the steps right below this I'm just doing it with you with with this one right now so with these two will it be negative 1.87 on both of these well look at this guy you got to keep track of your coefficients it's a two to one to one ratio if this was appearing at 1.87 these are going to be disappearing by half and why half? Because it's a 1 to 2 ratio. Okay, so in chapter 14, when we were calculating the rate, and we knew his rate, but the other one had a coefficient of 1, we divided by 2. So right here, if I take that 1.87, oops, uh, 1.87 and uh, dividing by 2, I know it's not proper scientific notation, 0.935. It's because I'm trying to keep that exponent the same. If you plugged in the whole exponent, you would probably get like negative 4. So 0.935 to the negative 3. One more time. Why did I do that? Because the reactants are a coefficient of 1 and the product is 2. He is increasing 2 times faster than the reactants. Okay. So now I take my initial and my change and I subtract them. Okay. So you have to remember that reactants are decreasing. If you started with 1.0, you're going to end with less than 1.0. So 1.0, E negative 3. And technically, you don't need to plug in that negative 3. If you keep these coefficients the same, this will also be the same. Okay? So 1.0 minus that 0.935. Okay, uh, I get oh, a very small number. Hold on, I think I played that in wrong. Okay, So when I subtract each one, these are just step by steps, okay, as you see right there, uh, you will get, and like I said, I know it's not proper scientific notation, you will get point, uh, was it zero, six, five, let me see, one minus point nine three five. Yeah, 0 0.0635. If by chance you don't like that way, okay, that's fine. Then it's 6.5 to the negative 5. It's not a big deal. You, they both are the same. Same thing with this one. 2 minus 2, uh, sorry, 2 minus 0.935. And you do get 1.065 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay. 
those are my magical values that I need because now I have equilibrium. Now I can plug them in to the KC expression. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, if you're giving initial, you have to do an ice chart. Okay. So right here, it just tells you step by step in words. Just look at what it says. Okay. There you go. So see, you subtracted each one by half. And then there's my values that we just calculated. So with these values, I first write my KC expression, I plug my numbers in, and this is where students mess up. It's that part right there. You have to remember that it has a coefficient of 2. So then when you square that and then divide and divide, and my KC is greater than 1, and because my KC uh, is greater than 1, I know my products are very dominant, very favored. Okay, so just keep practicing that review from the beginning okay so let's try to do one scratch uh, and all these ice charts ladies and gentlemen you do not have to keep writing the same ice chart over and over I was just working it out for you step by step so you had one okay so let's try one ourselves we have and this is on page 648 so I could practice one with you we have a volume and we have a moles of each one of those reactants bless you and we have a temperature the value of the equilibrium constant, Kc, what are the equilibrium concentrations, okay? So notice, ladies and gentlemen, they didn't even come out and say anything about initial. That means if you want the equilibrium, that means you're not at equilibrium to begin with. And that's when the wording gets very tricky when they don't say initial. So what are the equilibrium concentrations? That's a ding, ding, ding. I'm not at equilibrium, but I need to get to equilibrium. So I must be starting with initial, okay? They did tell me volume. They told me moles. Okay, easy peasy. So all of these right here, that one mole is going to be now, uh, oh, sorry, the iodine. The hydrogen is 1.0. Now that's molarity. And the iodine, 2 divided by 1. Well, then just be 2 molarity. They didn't say anything about HI, so I don't have anything at the beginning. Okay? Here starts my I chart. So I just write my three letters. Okay? And I like to, I'm going to move my letters over here. I like to, when I'm doing the math, I keep the math under the chemicals. Okay? So right here for ice. Initially, I have 2 molarity, and initially, I have 1. And I have no products, okay? I don't even know what equilibrium went to, okay? All I know is what KC is in the end. So these three boxes right here, that's where I need to go to. But what if they don't give me the change, okay? So if uh, one of the chemicals equilibrium value not given so what if they didn't tell me like one of those three well then you have this thing called the x okay and it's called the x for the change okay so here we go see right here for the change we're going to put an x but now you got to pay very close attention to the balance equation and who's disappearing and appearing our reactants we know are disappearing as our product is appearing but are they disappearing and appearing at the same rate no these ones have a coefficient of one whereas HI has a coefficient of two so I'm going to be creating an X but they're not all the same X 2 HI is being produced twice as much so I put a two in front of them so now I bring these two values together the I and the C and I have 2.00 minus X. And I have 1.00 minus X. And 0 plus this is just 2X. Okay? The name of the game is Find X. And you're like, oh, man, Rodriguez, that's a lot of Xs. I know. But here we go. Let's see if you can see this cool thing. I'm finding KC. So KC, they did tell me, was 50.5. Okay? And then I'm going to write my expression. So KC, HI concentration over I2 over H2, okay? Do you see what I'm missing? I'm missing something important. 
that coefficient, hi, is the order. So I'm going to put a 2 there. Now all of this put in that expression. Okay, So I have 2x squared. I have hi 1 point, uh, 1 point, uh, da, da, da. and I am, do, 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 do. I'm going to change something because there's a new thing that happened with AP because of this wonderful uh, year. I'm going to change this problem uh, for hydrogen. I'm going to make them both two moles, okay, and I'll explain why I'm doing that, okay. So change all of these to that two molarity, make each one of them the same, okay? So H2 is two molarity minus X. And notice the other one is also two molarity minus X, okay? If both of these are the same, then you could put a square also, okay? All right. Uh, sorry, I had to pause. Let the dog out to go potty. Uh, so 2x on top squared, and then 2 minus x, and then squared also, okay? Now, the, there's a reason why I made both of these the same, okay? If I didn't, you would have had to use what's called the quadratic equation. Now, you're going to see a yellow statement coming up. AP is not requiring students to do the quadratic equation this year. There would have been a program that I plugged into your calculator, so you could have done the quadratic in five seconds. And you're like, wow, it usually takes me about five minutes just to write the whole equation and then solve for X. I know. So I made it that way instead so that way both of these were the same. Because I have a square on top and a square on the bottom, what I can do is I can cancel those out because they're the same exponent. Okay? If they're the same, you can do that. Okay? So AP is trying to make the math more simpler. So that way you don't have to do the quadratic equation. What you have left is now 50.5 equals 2x over 2.0 minus x. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you still got to do some factoring, okay? But you don't have to use the quadratic. So we're going to take this whole thing on the bottom, and we're going to bring it up here, and we're going to factor it out. So 50.5, and this is just called basic algebra, equals 2x. So the name of the game is, we're trying to get X's on one side and numbers on the other. So 50.5 times 2. And when you multiply that out, you get 101 minus, so you have to factor here into here, so minus 50.5X equals 2X. Okay? Now, basic algebra, bring the X's to both sides. So I'm going to add... 50.5x to each side. You don't have to show this step, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just showing you what I do. So this part's gone. So 101, oops, 101 equals uh, 2x, so 2 plus 50.5, which now just becomes 52.5x. What is x? Okay. So 101 divide 52.5, three sig figs, you get 1.92. Okay. And you're like, whew, Rodriguez, not too bad. We ain't done. What did we solve for? They want the equilibrium concentrations of all three. Okay, now we got to solve for all three. Put X into there. So now you list this. You say the chemical, we're almost there. I2, okay, you're putting that in and saying 2 minus 1.92. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if by chance your answer is ever negative for concentration, that has to be a bell going off in your head. Like, OMG, I cannot have a concentration that's negative. So if your X was actually greater than 2, you know you did something wrong in factoring. Okay? So 0 0.08 and then slap on the unit's molarity. Reminder, adding, subtracting, sig figs, the digits after the decimal, only those digits after the decimal. But because the value for H2 and I2 are the same, you can even do this. That's called saving time. Okay, They both equal that concentration. The last one you have to solve for is that product, HI. So HI is going to be 2 times uh, that 1.92. 
and 1.92 times 2. And because we're just taking the same number times 2, you're going to keep the 3 sig figs. So 3.84, and we solve for concentration. Okay, that's our answers. When you do math in AP, the answer has to be the last thing that you write. Okay, but I'm going to put a beware. Beware. Concentration and pressure is never, ever, ever negative. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so be very careful when you factor. All right, you're like, whew, that was a long problem. These are long problems. Okay, so like I said, AP is going to have a, a warning thing coming up. See, right there. Note, you will not use the quadratics on the AP exam. So you're going to find this video, 7.7 .7 to 7.10, around 12 minutes. You're going to do this sample AP question that was back in the day. And then they want you to use an ice table, okay, to help solve for that answer. Okay, so you're going to do that problem. Graphical representation, okay, of the answer to guided practice number two. Okay, so where is equilibrium achieved for all chemicals? Draw a line. Okay, so if AP asks you to draw a line, remember at equilibrium, okay, at equilibrium, all concentrations or pressure are constant, not equal. So if you had to draw a line, okay, same thing, right here and about right here, so I would put it the very first spot that I see they turn constant. And if you just draw a line about right there, and then we would just label it equilibrium. So you guys are going to do these guided practice. Oops, I always forget that I in the middle. Uh, you guys are going to do the guided practice number two and then also for number three. Okay, so there's your ice. Okay, and once again, you do not have to write out the words initial change in equilibrium. Okay, guided practice number three. Okay, there you go. That's what the graph would look like. So AP tips, this is AP yelling at you, okay? So calculating equilibrium concentrations. For any reaction, the equilibrium concentrations of the reactant and product, they depend, they depend on initial. However, okay, you cannot plug in to KC or KP unless you have equilibrium values, okay? The equilibrium constant is the same at any temperature regardless of the initial concentrations, okay? So what they're trying to tell you, as long as temperature stays constant, if the concentrations for either the initial or equilibrium, if they change, you can still use the same KC or KP because temperature didn't change. Concentration can change all day long. And you just saw that in chapter 14. We manipulated concentration. We doubled it. We halved it. We tripled it. But the, the K still stayed the same. There is no such thing as the law of conservation of moles. It says the law of conservation of mass. It says the law of conser uh, conservation of matter. But there's no law for moles. So moles will change, grams cannot, okay? So regardless when you do your ice charts, you can plug in pressures, okay? You can, in any unit, any unit for pressure, and you know they're probably gonna give you ATM or TOR, okay? Uh, and concentration, no moles and no grams, okay? So if you had to do a little assuming, 